They know how you look like, honey. They know you got rolls. They know you got a belly. So, I don't know which big, fluffy, chubby, curvy girl needs to hear this, but you don't have to decrease in size for someone else to choose you. Such a crazy way of starting it off. They know you busted. I mean, let's keep it a buck. They saw you. They knew that you was busted from head to toe. They saw you was voluptuous in ways that are not optimal. Like, for instance, in the buttocks, definitely good domesticated buttocks are very good good and, and delicious especially if they're nice and plump the gut though i mean they know about it they saw the gut they know that you got storage capacity underneath it it's obviously not the best it's not optimal but you got it don't lie it's okay also before we get any further into this video can we please talk about a trend that i've been thoroughly disagreeing with these these eyebrows and how they're lighter here than they are anywhere else why why you did your makeup well i'll give you that um but for some reason what happened here? Why do you look like the sun hit every part of your face with the exception of your eyebrows? I don't get it. I never, I'll, I'll never understand modern makeup trends. Um, and also the fake, the little fake dotted on like freckles. Uh, speaking as a guy that actually has freckles, I know that you guys don't see that I have freckles. When I grew up, I had like a lot of them. But then post-puberty, they just kind of evaporated. But if you look really, really close on my face, you will find the freckles. Uh, they're not very good looking for dudes, I think, for the most part. Like, dudes will get made fun of them. I guess women, are it's cooler to have them. Um, I've even seen some women actually get them tattooed on their face because freckles are so cool. And I've always thought, what if this trend dies out? Kind of like a few years back, right? Like 10 years ago, it was like really cool to have really really small like semen sized eyebrows and nowadays they're really thick like really thick eyebrows are optimal like the styles change so like for instance in 2008 or like 2006 when soldier boy was on the scene it was very good for men to walk around with clothes that don't fit them like clothes that literally are five or six times the size that they actually are because that's just what was cool okay you get a belt, you get pants that don't fit you, and you wear a belt on literally everything, like an anime character. And nowadays, it's not like that. And even like 10, 15 years ago, when skinny jeans were a thing, and dudes were literally giving themselves uh, prostate exams with their pants, it, it, it's died out. You don't, guys don't wear the skinny jeans anymore, with the exception of like Usher. So there are a few guys still doing it, but nobody does that anymore. And I just kind of think if you're devoting yourself a little bit too hard to this, this trend, and in like three years, that trend is no longer going to be trendy is the reason why it's called a trend. But anyway, um, yeah, I just thought it was a really weird way to start up the video. But like, listen, he knows you busted. Listen, he saw you. He saw your picture. You busted. Just keep it a buck. For someone else to find you attractive. Yeah, okay. Like, I got to go back real quick because I forgot what we were talking about. Which big, fluffy, chubby, curvy girl needs to hear that? All the best words. Why don't you say other words, though? Like, yeah, you, you know, busted, smell bad, not the goodest size person, don't look like a human being, uh, smell like f cream brulee. Not the goodest, not the goodest words that we're going to use, right? I mean, they're synonymous, right? Obviously, curvy, thick, uh, whatever you want to say, all the best words. But sometimes you got to include a little bit of other th Cheeto dust on the, on the gut, on the, uh, the fupa, right? It's okay. Uh, 19 inch belly button. It's all right to add the end the things that are not going to be the most optimal. Just write that down instead of like, yeah, I'm thick, curvy, and beautiful. I mean, what about musty? This, but you don't have to decrease in size for someone else to choose you. You don't, but it would actually help. Uh, you could totally 100% just stay the size that you are, but you're defeating the entire purpose. For the most part, if you tell somebody that is struggling finding a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you go, you don't need to change, you're good. And that person's going to go, but I'm getting nothing. So what do you mean I don't need to change? If you're telling me I don't need to change and I'm getting zero things, that just means I'm dust, that just means I'm fucked, I'm not gonna get anything if that's the case, like, I, there's nothing I can do, it's never in anybody's interest to tell them that they're good exactly the way they are, they don't need to change anything about them, that's actually terrible, that person is literally struggling, you're literally reconfirming that they have terribleness, and they're just going, oh, I guess I just don't need to change, so they're never gonna change, and they're gonna always have that problem, people die alone a lot, okay, so if you want to find a boyfriend and or girlfriend, Put in the work, go to the gym, um, get on the calorie deficit, build the muscle, get a skincare routine, wear deodorant, wash your butt cheeks. There are a lot of men out there that don't wash their butt cheeks and some women, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. If women are not washing the butt cheeks, that's an anomaly. Most women are hyper aware of that. And you know what? I want to talk about this for a second. When I was growing up, everybody used to tell me guys smell bad. Dudes grow, you know, dudes just smell like the worst all the time. And then as I've gotten older, I've realized it's not guys. 
it's women. You guys have like a whole bunch of things that need to be washed way more than men. I can just not take a shower for like four days and be fine. And sure, my meat, my scrotum area might start emanating a stench or a, some type of odor that might not be as optimal as like it would have been if I just took a shower, but it would be nowhere near uh, some of the women that I've been around that don't shower for even like a few, like a day. So uh, yes, men are better. Sorry to say it. Uh, only because we don't have to wash ourselves very often. And I think that's probably where it comes from. Women have to be hyper aware of where their odors are coming from. Whereas dudes are afforded the right to just not care. And then they can just casually walk around smelling like butt butter and nobody cares. So I don't know, I guess society. And then also the fact that we have more leniency when it comes to the fact that we don't need to really be wearing or washing ourselves as uh, as frequently. Um, you know, my personal record on not taking a shower was, I think I was uh, probably, you notice, know, okay, whenever Modern Warfare 2 came out, that summer, uh, no shower, absolutely no shower. I don't know what people were thinking letting that transpire, dude. I mean, I don't, I mean, obviously, I was a child at the time, so it wasn't completely my fault. I take all accountability off myself because I was a child, and uh, it was terrible. I don't know. What was that? Probably two months, two months without a shower. I don't know what I was doing. I literally wasn't even going outside. I was just in the house playing Modern Warfare 2 in the summertime. Yes, I had an air conditioner, and uh, but it was still not good. It was terrible. For someone else to find you attractive, and it doesn't matter if that someone else is conventionally very, very attractive. I'm saying this because I recently caught myself in this situation where someone that is indeed conventionally very attractive was trying to approach me or is like trying to see me. A lot of times I see that people will have these anecdotal evidences or they'll have their personal examples and they'll go, listen guys. It's possible. Trust me. I mean, look at me. I've, I literally, it happened to me. So if it happened to me, it can definitely happen to you. And most of the time I just kind of think, no, that's not how that works. You're the exception to this. You're the, you're the exception to this. So if a guy approached you and he thought you was looking delicioso and he approached you up and he said, I'm trying to be with you. And you were like, ah, oh, yeah, I guess you, you conveying this information to other people and telling them it can work for you too, is not the case. That's like somebody saying, listen, I made my money through the lottery. You guys should also play the lottery and win. Yes, just try to win, guys. If you win, you'll get everything that you want. But the chances of me winning are like non-existent. Like you just kind of got lucky. So I would never bank on not doing anything to change yourself, to make yourself more desirable to, uh, to the person that you're trying to be with. Uh, I would always say, don't play the lottery Play the winning game, okay? Wait it out, work on yourself. And then that way you'll at least increase the chances organically rather than literally just going, I'm just gonna put my number into this machine and hopefully my number comes out. And I was asking myself like, why? And I'm not saying this in a degrading way towards me or because I think I'm not beautiful or whatever. I think it was just my inner teen being triggered that someone that literally looks like a potential high school bully back then i really don't is this is that a compliment to say that your boyfriend currently looks like a high school bully what are high school bullies dude i don't know man because when i went to high school uh i don't think anybody really bullied i feel like i out i feel like when i went to school bullies were a thing before that and then like after that they may have existed there were a few asshole people that would do asshole things but most of those people um, they were not good people to be around. Like nobody wanted to be around those people in general. So if you were a nice person in high school, odds are you were good. And then the bullies probably just didn't succeed. Like I know people that were bullies in high school that literally are paraplegic. And that's all I'm saying. You know, Hey dude, uh, if you bully people, you're not going to walk anymore. No, they got shot. These guys were literally like gang violence or whatever. I went to a really, really like hood school. Okay. There was a lot of people that I went to school with that are currently in jail and or dead, which is really terrible by the way. Um, but then again, I can't really feel bad for them because like, if you got arrested for killing somebody, what am I going to do? Like, I can't be like, Oh man, free my mans. Dude, you killed somebody. What do you want me to do? Like, I'm not going to just be like, outside the fucking the jailhouse and be like, dude, this is ridiculous. How many people did he kill? Four? That's it? I'm not doing that. That's kind of crazy, dude. Um, the same thing could be said for, I know, two dudes that are currently not able to walk and they're paralyzed. And then I, you go, why? What happened? And they go, I got shot. And you go, oh, well, what the fuck, bro? Like, why are you putting yourself in a position to get shot to begin with? And it's always an excuse. It's always this and that. I have no idea what we're talking about right now, by the way. I don't think it's a good idea to shit on your partner and be like, they might have been a bully. That's crazy as hell, dude. You might have been a mean girl. I don't know what to tell you. 
sees me and finds me attractive if you get what I'm saying. And yeah, the problem is that I caught myself being, or having a harder time being vulnerable with that person. I feel like this individual probably knows that they have deep insecurities about their weight, yet they're not gonna do anything about it because they have somehow managed to convince themselves that there is nothing wrong with being fat and that, you know, if it works, a lot of times people will just not do anything about it. And that's always so terrible because if you're in a relationship with somebody, I've always said this, you should probably want that person to push you in a direction that you probably don't want to go down. In the sense of losing weight, for instance, it's really good to be at a good body fat percentage, right? Otherwise, you're literally suffering on a daily basis. What is the person that you're with who is a conventionally attractive person, which by all accounts would be somebody that's in shape or at least average, right? Normal size body. Why isn't that individual trying to convince you to lose weight? Why isn't that person trying to talk to you about losing weight? You are obviously deeply insecure about it. You're making a whole TikTok about how you don't think that you deserve this individual or you don't know if this person actually likes you for you or is this some kind of like underlying reason for this person to be with you. You obviously feel some type of way about it. I mean, you're literally projecting it. So why don't you work on that? You know what I'm talking about? It seems like the guy that you're with who this very hot, attractive, beautiful, ginormously amazing dude that you're with why don't you talk to him about it and see if he can get you into shape? Because it seems like you are really insecure. And you might be looking at this woman and going, she doesn't look fat. Look at the arm, okay? Look at the hand. We're seeing a whole bunch of extraness right there. You're not able to see it because of what she's wearing, but she is definitely big backed. Because... Okay, really quickly, before we go any further, can somebody please tell me what's going on with the trend of putting rhinestones on your teeth? What is that? Does that not interfere with anything? Is that like a medical procedure? Are you going to a dentist and getting them like to drill and then putting like the rhinestone in your teeth and just leaving you there? What is that? I see a lot of women with that and I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Where do you get that? Are you just going on Google or like Amazon and just buying rhinestone sets like a bedazzler or, or uh, whatever? Like you're just finding rhinestones and just throwing them on your teeth. What are you doing exactly? How are you doing that? How are they staying on your teeth for as long as they are? Do you not care about that? I don't think it looks cool. You don't look cool with random rhinestones on your teeth. You look weird, okay? I prefer if your teeth were teeth. Again, like my inner teen was struggling to comprehend that someone that is this conventionally attractive is seeing you and seeing beauty in every inch of your body. I don't know if they're seeing every inch of your body. You probably just give them more benefits than not. I know that for most dudes, most dudes are ugly. And I'm not like throwing dudes down the well by saying that most dudes compared to women are ugly. I feel like women are just better looking guys, right? For the most part, in terms of like the beauty standard. I've dated women before that were like, you know, average looking women. And I've dated women before that were like 10 out of 10s. Like women that are, I'm not bragging about it, but uh, I've dated women that were literally approached on a daily basis. Like, you know, you're so beautiful. You're so gorgeous, this and that, whatever. Um, most of the time, like I've had conversations with these people before and they go like, so are you intimidated when guys like, like me? Are you intimidated by this? Most of the time I don't really care because I know what I bring to the table. And I know that just because a few dudes will hit you up and tell you that you're beautiful and gorgeous and you have options outside of me, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not the best option for you. So if, you know, if you're with somebody and you're struggling with the insecurity of like thinking, is this person more attractive than me? Is, does this person have more options than me? Probably, but it's okay. Because if you know how you present to people, if you know what you bring to the table, if you know what your value is, you should be secure in the knowledge that just because somebody that is more attractive than you, somebody that has more, maybe more success than you in a certain area, that doesn't necessarily mean that person is better than you. So you should always be aware of that. And this just comes down to experiences. I feel like you have to at least under, like you have to go through life a little bit to understand that because I was very insecure about myself earlier on in my life and I feel like a lot of people are because you don't really understand how the dating realm even works and it's changed a lot in the last 10 years and even in the last five years it's changed dra just dramatically so if you haven't dated in a long time it might be really difficult to like navigate that realm but I will tell you right now dude just because somebody is getting a lot more options than you doesn't necessarily mean that you're not the best option you should really be investing in how you how, how you appear to the world um, understanding your value and emphasizing those things as much as possible. Work on yourself as much as possible. Just because somebody is uh, more attractive than you doesn't mean they're more attractive than you. Just because somebody is a hottie on the outside doesn't mean they're a hottie on the inside. You are, could, you could be a hottie on the inside. <laughs> you could be a hottie on the outside and the inside. But the point I'm making is that doesn't necessarily mean that just because this person is really, really beautiful, they're necessarily more valuable than you. They might just be more valuable than you in terms of like visually speaking, but that's very superficial. And that means in every insecurity you have so 
looks like mm, is this some kind of like because yeah for the longest time i believed i had to look a certain way to attract certain people which is true that is exactly how it works it works like that for everything there's a reason why when we build stuff that looks good because we want to appear to people's visual identifiers, okay? Like, if that wasn't the case, all cars would basically look the same, or, like, they wouldn't have particular styles on the higher ends, they wouldn't have particular styles, there's a reason why certain phones look the way they do. Like, yes, there is, if you want to sell something, you have to, you have to at least understand what you're selling and try to make it look visually appealing, for the most part. And I know that comes from me growing up in a predominantly white area, but still, that does a lot to you even though i've been on this self-love and healing journey for the longest time i always get a little bit red flags in my head when somebody says i'm on my self-love healing journey and then you go oh okay what does that even mean and they nobody can articulate what that means or you ask them like how long have you been on that and they're like oh since i broke off my ex and you go okay how long was that five years ago jesus christ do you know how many times i've talked to somebody that said that like they haven't dated in five years because they're working on themselves how long does it take to work on yourself? Jesus, man. Like, I get it. You should be working on yourself. You should be trying to increase your value. But sometimes people will be waiting way too long, dude. Like, how much? What are you even doing? When you ask these people, what are you doing specifically in order to increase your value? Almost nobody has actual, oh, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm, I got a better job or, you know, I, I'm making more money. It's always that. It's always that. It's never like I'm like trying to get better in emotional understanding. I'm trying to open up to people more often. I'm trying to like, uh, you know, get better dresses or whatever, dr dress better, skincare, things like that. It's almost always money. It's always money, bro. I, I got triggered, I have to admit. And I also talked about this with the person and I'm being more vulnerable now, even though I usually don't have a hard time to be vulnerable with people. But for some reason, I was just like, it's like I'm hearing you. Like I'm hearing you calling me all these things, beautiful, gorgeous from head to toe. But it's like, a part of me is still like, are you sure about that? Are you sure about like, mm, Deep insecure on this man. It's really, it's really obvious. Like, I mean, she's saying that she's insecure. She's saying she's insecure, but I don't think she understands to what degree this insecurity is really playing a role in her life. I mean, she's literally questioning the person that she's with and like the legitimacy of their words. And to a certain degree, I can see where they're coming from. For me personally, when somebody compliments me visually, I don't really, I don't really get a lot of value in it. I don't really care if somebody finds me attractive or somebody um, tells me that I'm handsome or I dress nice today. I actually don't like it. Like, I personally don't like that at all. Uh, it's nice. Like, I, I always accept a compliment. I'll always accept it because it's like, I know what you're trying to say. You're trying to, you're trying to compliment me. It's the, it's the, the intention behind it is that you're complimenting me. So I understand that. I much rather prefer if somebody complimented me on the things that I do rather than the way that I look. But I know there are other people out there that do prefer the way that they look. And sometimes it can be very difficult for people to look inward and try to like, okay, when you're dating somebody, right? It's very important to stop thinking about how you think they want to see that like yourself and, and, and you should be thinking about how they want to be seen. So like, for instance, if you're dating a girl, most of the time girls are really, really, uh, they really like to have compliments. Like oh, you're really beautiful today. You look really good for me today and whatever. I've been in situations before where I was dating somebody and it's just like, you never compliment. You never tell me I'm pretty. You never tell me I'm beautiful. You never tell me this. I'm just thinking like, well, of fucking course I think you're beautiful. Like I'm dating you. Like I've been dating you for like three years. What are you talking about? Like, of course I think you're fucking hot. Like, of course I think you're beautiful and stuff like that. But it just, sometimes it, it just takes a little bit of effort to push yourself to say those words because it's not so much about, of course they know these things, but they just wanna hear you say it. And it's more valuable that you say it, of course, compared to some other random person. So it's really important that when you're in dating or when you're dating, it's really important to understand what the other person wants and then cater to those values instead of looking inward and seeing what you like and trying to project that upon somebody else, right? So of course, like for me, I don't really like when people compliment me visually. So the person that I'm with would have to understand that and think okay uh let me compliment this individual on the work that he's done let me compliment the individual on like you know the things that he does for me rather than how i look you understand so it's really important to do that because a lot of people will internalize how they feel and project that upon somebody else when that's not the case maybe i still have to hide this part a little bit even though yeah child they know i also don't think it's a good idea to like be posting the stuff online like she's very deeply insecure about this and it's great that she's talking to her 
man's is about it but uh simultaneously dude i don't know like i always question why do these people post themselves online in such a vulnerable way saying this stuff dude it, this seems like something you would definitely want to say to your boyfriend which is great you are doing that but why why are we hearing it too how you look like like it didn't make any sense but still a part of me was like oh, it does make sense you just gotta okay I, I really hate it when people say I this doesn't make sense to me, but they know why. Like they act this person does know why, and they just articulate the reason why. She's insecure. Don't know what for. She's turning heads when she walks to the door, or, or and she is not dealing with that. She's she's not finding an outlet to actually deal with that those problems. And of course, it may be like really beneficial for her to talk to her man's is about that her bae. Uh, but it might actually be more beneficial to find a therapist that's more focused in this particular area so you can dissect that a little bit more because like odds are when you're dating somebody, they may not be equipped in order to handle that particular type of conversation. I know that when I'm in situations where um, somebody is – it's really difficult sometimes when you're in a, a relationship with somebody and they need you to do something, but you're just not equipped for that. You're just not that person for that particular thing, and that's okay because you're not going to be that person every single time they need you to be that person, right? Like let's say, for instance, you're dating somebody – and they lost somebody in their family. It's going to happen, right? Sometimes in those positions, I'm terrible because, like, I don't know what to do. I'm just sitting there like, holy shit, like, this person is going through a dramatic event and I have no idea. Like, my first my first reaction is to, like, make a joke or say something funny. But, like, obviously, it's not going to do anything here. It's going to be, like, actually terrible if I do that. So sometimes it's really, really appropriate to acknowledge that maybe the person that you're talking to is not good in those scenarios. Give them a little bit of leeway and find somebody that you can talk to that's going to be better in those scenarios. So like, for instance, it's really good that she's talking to her boyfriend. She could probably find a lot of closure on that particular front, but it actually might be really, really, really beneficial if she could find somebody that's like actually uh, equipped to handle this, like a therapist or even a close family friend that has a little bit more experience on that. Like, you're not going to be good at everything. Maybe if they see this part, maybe they they won't like you anymore. Maybe they... Yeah, she's actually saying that she's trying to, like, find reasons why this person doesn't like them and show them that and be like, so you think I'm hot, but what do you think about my belly button, how it'd be stretching up this far? Like, what do you think about my belly button right now? You think that shit's... You think that's good, right? You love that shit? How do you it feel knowing that my belly button is actually deeper than most vaginas? How does that feel? Yeah, we should just be having sex with my vagina right now. I mean, sorry, my belly button, my belly button, sorry. Overlooked something. They must have overlooked something for them to be here. But no, they chose you for a reason. Yeah, well, you know what, dude? There could be a many reasons for that. I'm sure she's a great person. You know, I'm sure she has a lot of qualities and things like that. But I, this, this, the reason for thinking is incredibly justified because when you're fat, you're literally a detriment. Um, so it's just really important that you know, it's nice. It's okay. By the way, her hair looks like pork rinds. Sorry. So, yeah, whoever this reaches, please don't let society's beauty standards, whatever, let you miss out on beautiful things. Beautiful. It's also a really bad way of looking at it. So, like, society's beauty standards are centered in reality for the most part. Like, of course, they might be exaggerated in certain areas. Like, for instance, women that weigh, like, 110 pounds or, like, guys that are supposed to have six packs and, you know, ginormous pectoral muscles, like... These things are exaggerations of how people are supposed to look at. But if you look at them from the baseline, understanding of them very generally, um, yeah, there's a reason why men are supposed to have broader shoulders. There's a reason why men are not supposed to have the bubble gutted. There's a reason why women are not supposed to be walking around with the, you know, the 15-inch the belly button deep. There's a reason for all that stuff. It's because it's not healthy for you. We really, realistically, when you're looking at somebody and you think they're beautiful, it's mainly because you're looking at the um, health you're looking at the health of that individual because like a lot of those body cues, a lot of the physical body cues are just health statuses. So if you're fat, you're like critical, like your health bar is like blinking because you're fat and that's like, that's like eating away at your health bar. But when you're skinnier, and of course, it's not always an indication if somebody's skinnier, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're healthy, but it's a good indication that they can at least take care of themselves. They may have um, a, a better understanding of nutrition. They have a, like at least a baseline understanding of how to take care of themselves physically. Like that's, you know, these, this is all really important for a lot of people people in life because you are worth it regardless you are worthy to be chosen and you will be chosen that's not how that works work you got to work for it okay i'm always going to keep it a buck with you just because this girl played the lottery and she struck out fine and uh, that's great but most people got to work for it most people actually got to put in the effort and the time and uh literally sit there and grind out for that 
it's not going to be as simply as easy as you deserve this. You deserve that. I'm sick of people just saying that. No, you don't just deserve that. Do you deserve to be a millionaire? No, you have to work for that shit. Do you deserve to have a Tesla outside your house? Well, maybe not a Tesla, but you get the point I'm making like a really, really nice, beautiful, awesome car. Do you deserve to have that? No, because most people got to work for it. Now, it's great if you do get those things randomly, like somebody, you know, just drops them in your laps. Wow. But you shouldn't just be expecting that. It, it, that should be like a, wow, this is crazy. Like, I'm so lucky type thing. Not a, you deserve this. That's a terrible way of looking at literally anything in life, dude. Most people have to work for it. Most people have to grind. Most people have to put in effort to actually get the result out that they want. Okay. So it's a very bad way of looking at this to be like, you just deserve this. That's not going to work for literally 99% of people. So um, just just wanted to put it out there. Um, this is a very bad way of looking at it. Almost everything she said thus far has been incredibly wrong with the exception of her projecting her insecurities. That's obviously not wrong. It's wrong with the way she's doing it. But um, everything so far has just been bad, in including the the society standards of how beauty should be. The society standards of beauty is most definitely skewed in a in a bad direction. But simultaneously, you should be looking at the baseline understanding of that, you know? and you don't have to do anything in order for that to happen just that's be yourself like that's man you could just tell this person man it okay look definitely just be yourself you should be not putting on an illusion you should not be like putting on this facade this mask of whatever in order to attract other people it might work sure but usually that's not sustainable because you're putting on an act you're putting on an illusion there's only so long you could do that before the mask comes off um so I would never recommend doing that, but I would always say put in the work, put in the fucking work. You can be yourself, but just a better self. Like, be your authentic self. And but that doesn't have to be fat. You will attract the right people that are supposed to be in your life. I yeah. keep on saying that. It's a terrible way of looking at it, bro, because there are going to be a lot of people that literally are in a situation where they get zero, literally nothing. And they're looking for reasons to change or they're trying to find they're trying to find an outlet so they can like see what they can do in order to change. And this person is just going to go. Yeah, just don't do anything. Like, you're good. Like, what do you just stop? Like, just be yourself. That's not going to help anybody. That's literally just going to hurt them. You're literally just reinforcing the fact that they get nothing and they're just going to continue to get nothing. And I live by that. And it's literally manifesting in my life. Yeah. So. It's just bullshit. Like, this is just, it sounds nice. It does. And I'm sick of people just saying things in a nice way. But the words behind it are like the, the context of the words that they're saying are very very deteriorated like this is a very nice sediment like it's beautiful like you can do anything you could be anything type shit but reality of the situation is you're gonna have to work for it so you can go ahead and believe this if you want to but for the most part this is all wrong yes don't be too hard on yourself you are worth it to be chosen yeah i don't know about that dude that girl's on some different shit bro guys dating things that nobody talks about dealing with people who make you feel like you're not worthy of love and respect and that you're not good enough and that also treat you less than Bullshit. Rubbish. it low-key feels like a fat rite of passage let's talk about it how have you experienced this the only thing i can come up with is people treating us bad because we don't think we deserve better or we feel like this is the only opportunity of a relationship or love that we'll have when you're fatter, it's going to be your, your, what you're basically doing is like, okay, you have a funnel of people and what, how it, how it should work in relationships or how it should work in dating is that you want that funnel, but you want to be at the end of that funnel. You want to be that, like the bottle, you know what I'm talking about? You want to be like the, the bottle opener, whatever that shit's called. You, you guys know what I'm saying? Like the funnel at the very top, right? You want to be there choosing the people that are the ones that you want to date so you have like hundreds of options but you want to be the one that chooses ultimately which one you want out of those 100 people when you're fat you're taking that 100 options and you're turning that into five and now you can choose definitely between those five options but really think about the number now between choosing between 100 people and five people you're not going to get just from averages you're going to get more suck dick people at the five end than you would have at the hundred because the averages work out like that so Yes, um, I don't I, I don't think it's impossible. Like you can totally do that, but it's very ignorant to assume that you're not gonna have s severely diminished options. But uh, you know, go off, Queen. Is that true? Yes. Okay. okay, I have a message for everyone, but it's even more specifically for my fellow plus size women. When it comes to dating, it is okay for you to say no. 
Before I get into it, hi, my name is Simone Mariposa. I am an actor, singer, content creator, birth doula, and body liberation activist and advocate who is- Everything she just said was a fucking red flag. The, the, it's okay to say no is actually 100% correct, but everything past that, all those things were just- I hate when people just start listing out all of their, like, all their prerequisites. Like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. Like, great, dude, that's awesome, bro. I'm the, that doesn't mean that I'm, like, that doesn't mean necessarily I'm going to take everything you say as, like, the, the bee's knees or, like, the Bible- was extremely passionate about inspiring people to love themselves to the fullest. Whenever I hear somebody say love yourself, I'm always thinking like, I'm a beat off. Like, I'm about to love myself tonight. Dude, I got that cocoa butter, dude. I got that Vaseline, dude. I'm about to love that shit. Now, if you've had a hard time with love in general, then you can definitely relate to this. But I say this is for my plus size women specifically because a lot of us feel like love is rare. Like it only hits us once. Many of us feel like we don't know the next time someone's going to be into us. So whenever the opportunity presents itself. Hair is fried, by the way. I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that. That's Shit is busted. We hold on to it super tight without even knowing if we actually like the person or not. That's and it. a lot of it has to do with media. Plus size women aren't often shown in love and having positive dating experiences. I, I just, uh, every time I hear somebody, okay, dude, it's such a fucking, I'm just so sick of people hitting me with the external reasons. Dude. I'm just, I'm just so sick of this shit, dude. I mean, we're, we're literally seeing this shit firsthand. This woman's literally saying, Whenever we get love, it is few and far between. And when we do get it, we're holding on to it. So that way, because we don't know if we're ever going to get it again, but we don't even know necessarily like the person that we're with. And then you therefore, then you blame that on the reason for, for that is, uh, is media. Not you though, not you, not the fact that you're fat, not because you're literally diagnosing your own problem. Not that you're literally overweight. That's going to be, okay. And you know what? I say this multiple times. It's not really necessarily a lot of times have to do with the, the person's weight when it comes to the inability to find people it's really the ideology i don't want to be with somebody that takes zero accountability and of course if you're fat most of the time like if these people are the way that they are they probably don't take accountability in general because they're literally projecting all these insecurities and claiming that it's no problem at all if somebody's willing to say that the reason why they get no matches on dating apps is because of how social media or media in general is i know that you're like you know and you're fat like you're you got a lot of issues you got a lot of fucking issues bro obviously um i can automatically determine that she probably thinks that being fat is not a negative thing and she probably thinks that it should just be accepted in society and whatever the fuck that's all bullshit like it's just crazy bro what you can't compel somebody to want to date you because you think it's unfair that you're 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 mistreated as a fat person you get out what you put in so if you're fat and you're putting out that the fact that you're fat not many people are attracted to that and as many times as i've heard these people say this dog shit brain dead um smooth brained take of it's it's society's expectation for you to be thinner yes it is bro because most people don't want to be with somebody that is literally dying Somebody is literally on the brink every single day, struggling to do basic human being activities, and at any point in time, may have to go to the ER because their high blood pressure is like 200. So yes, it's not a good thing, okay? You're not beautiful, you're diabetic. Get that shit in check, bro. Your foot is literally dragging 15 inches behind you. So it's easy to think, oh, plus size women don't date that often. So if someone likes me, I have to seize the day. But baby, I am here to tell you, just because someone likes you does not mean you have to like them back. True. Just because. Yeah, but does anybody really like disagree with that? I'm sure there are plenty of people out there that are only dating because it's opportunistic. Sure. But I'm pretty sure most people will agree that if you don't like the person, you shouldn't date them regardless. Of course. Super interested in you does not mean that that's your man. Whether you believe it or not, you have a choice in your dating experience. You do have a choice, but you're, what you're basically saying is like you're gaslighting into thinking that people that are fatter are having the same opportunities as people that are thinner. Therefore, you should be able to determine what person is better for you. But if the pool is literally four guys and your thin friend has a pool of 20 guys and your four guys all want to be with you because you're fat as fuck and they, wanna, they all want to smell your vagina and they want to impregnate your belly button. And the thin girl has like at least three or four of those guys that are actually genuine human beings. Well, then it's going to be really difficult for you. And then even in your scenario, let's say those five guys, one of them is really good because that's how averages work here. Let's say one of those guys is like really, really great and amazing, but he has other traits that you just don't like. Like he's not attractive. Like he might just be weird sometimes. He like, I don't know. He plays like League of Legends for 40 hours a day. Like it's, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you, you really are reducing the pool of men by a, a lot and i feel like these people just don't understand that like yes you can pick and choose but most of the time people the reason why people don't is because it's very few and far between so when they do come across a guy that's even like normal um to one degree or another 
they have to pick it usually. So I would always say make yourself thinner or make yourself more attractive. So that way you can choose the person that you're going to be with ultimately, because if you have no options, then nobody wants to be the only option. That's always never going to be like most people want to know that you had multiple, multiple, multiple options and not just the fact that you were bored and you had nobody else hitting you up. So you just took this opportunity because you had nothing else. So anyway. You have options. Where there's one, there's many. Uh, you can say this, dude, but like what this is basically saying is like you're in the middle of a desert and this is like there's food in front of you. There's like it's just like a great big giant burger. And she's going, you don't have to eat this right now. You don't have to eat this burger right now. Uh, or no, a better example would be there's a snake. It's a dead snake. And you can eat that dead snake and you'll get calories and you'll probably live a little bit. Or... Uh, you can just wait. This woman's sitting there and goes, you don't have to eat this right now. There are going to be other options. But then you go to the desert and there are no other options. And then now you're regretting whether or not you should have took that snake and ate that snake because now you have no options. So it's like that. It's like I'm sure that you maybe have options, but they're going to be really diminished. And they're probably going to be dudes that are like fetishizing you. And it can be hard to or believe dudes that, that in or, a society where plus size women are Or friends. dudes that are really down bad. Like dudes that only want to be with you because they think you're low quality and they think they can take advantage of you, which is also not good. One, there's many. And it can be hard to believe that in a society where plus size women are framed as desperate and not being cautious and feeling like they have to settle for less. But trust me, you don't. You are an active participant in your dating life. So trust yourself. Trust your instincts. If you don't like him like that, that's okay. He can go. Because True. I mean, that's a factual statement. But it's really ignorant to assume that you have the same amount of options. Like, you are you can do that. I agree. I think you should do that. But I also think that you should just lose weight so you don't have to deal with this in, in, in general. Because the person that's meant for you will definitely come along your path. You just have no, to... No, it's... That's terrible information, dude. That's gross information. It's like somebody saying... I've been sitting on my couch for five years doing fucking nothing. But you know what? Somebody on the internet told me that opportunities are going to arise someday, somehow. It's just going to randomly happen. No, that's not how that works. You have to actively be pursuing it. You can't just sit there and be sedentary and expect people to just show up. It's not how, to, it's not how that works. It's not how that works in general, bro. No, it's terrible information. Why do these people keep saying that shit as if it's like, holy, they're thou. No, bro, you have to do shit to get shit done. If you just sit there and do nothing perpetually for hours on a day, nothing gets done. Don't you realize that? If I wasn't doing this video right now, this video wouldn't be made. So you can't sit there and think, oh, I'm just gonna, no, the options are there. You just gotta be, you, don't, you, you just gotta be, you're keep, keep being your amazing self. No, that's not how it works. Put yourself out there, put in the work, make yourself more valuable. No, it's not as simple as just be there. Believe it and know that you deserve it. No, yeah, as a fat, this is definitely something that has happened to me. I'm just invisible. Boys like never talk to me. Why, what was even the purpose of putting like in there? I'm just invisible. Boys never talk to me. Just say that. Why'd you put like in there, dude? What are you, Ice Spice? Before, uh, straight men are so weird. True. Let's talk about it. Straight, men's are, straight men are weird because we don't suck dick. So I have had experiences similar to this where especially it's strange when you're in a group of girls who are skinny i think it's weird sometimes when people say this because i'm always thinking like when these when these women go like oh yeah i'm invisible to men i'm always thinking like and they go do you know what that's like and i go yeah uh, most men are invisible to like 99 percent of women it's very rare for a woman to actually acknowledge you and that's fine because like why would you give me the time of day i'm a literal nobody to you so like i don't expect it but for some reason a lot of women i see on this think they're very entitled to just be noticed which is not the case like you're not that girl and that's okay just in the same way that i'm not that guy it doesn't have you don't have to be that person everywhere you go so whenever i hear people say this shit, i'm always thinking like duh a fucking course like why would you think that i don't know what you're talking about but anyway and a man will come up and introduce himself to all of my friends which is never something that men have to experience i, I know that's completely irrelevant but like sometimes i hear these people talk about this and it's like this is obvious and literally say nothing to me and act like i wasn't there that is so fucking weird do not do that i feel like something low-key fun and fresh about being fat is that i think it really is a bullshit detector especially with men I mean, for sure, there are women that will treat you mean as well, um, but it's just so significant with men. It's not even funny. I guess you could be looking at the bright side of the situation. Like if a guy doesn't approach you, then you have an option to not have him as a boyfriend. But then again, he never wanted you to begin with. Or I guess maybe you're looking at this more of like, a, well, if he doesn't approach me, but he approaches these women, that means that he's probably an asshole. And therefore, these women shouldn't be dating him because if he's not going to approach me, he's probably not good in general as a human being because he's ignoring me and I'm a human being. Like, I can kind of see that a little bit more. 
But that doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad person. He's just probably not attracted to you to a degree to where he thinks that you deserve attention to begin with. So I don't know. Like, for instance, when I'm buying a video game, there are very many video games that I see and I completely negate or I discriminate against, like, most of them with the exception of this one that I want. Am I a bad person because I'm not playing, like, fucking, I don't know, power washing simulator? No. I just don't want to play that, okay? I'm, I'm going to play, like, Dragon Ball Z or, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! or something like that. I'm sorry. It's just, like, some people just have preferences. Anyway. I swear... I will know if like my friend's boyfriends or like just a man who I'm gonna call cap on this I know she I know she's about to say like she's gonna know if they're good people or assholes because of the way that they don't talk like listen uh, I'm gonna keep it a bug at you when my friends are in relationships I don't care to talk to their friends I know there there's like a trend to be like oh in introduce me to your friends I don't care about that I don't I like you, you know like if you wanted to see my friends it's tough shit like I don't that's not something I want to do, and that's not something I want to see. I don't, I don't care about your friends either. Like, for me personally, and I know that there are a lot of people out there that find value in, like, being around other people's friends and stuff like that. I never have. Um, and by the way, just because you're fat doesn't mean that you know this guy's boyfriend or this girl's boyfriend is bad. That's not how that works. He just may not want to talk to you. He may not be interested enough to talk to you. Like, I'll always be in a situation if I'm around people. I'm always going to, like, try to include everybody in the conversation as much as I possibly can. But for the most part... If I don't want to talk to you, I don't have to talk to you, dude. Like, how many times have I been at a, like, at a, uh, uh, like a fast food place or, like, um, a supermarket and there was a homeless guy or, like, a random person, like a churchgoer? Dude, literally, the other day, I was, like, walking down the street and there was, like, these, I don't know, like, three black people outside of a church. I didn't even know it was a church. Here where I live, churches are not, like, actual churches. They're just kind of, like, buildings that are white that have, like, black ladies singing in them. And it was, like, it's all Haitian. It's, like, it's all Haitian black lady churches and stuff so you know you walk by them and you hear like i don't know angelic voices coming out emanating out of this like one room house and there's like three black dudes outside screaming at each other and they all sound like they've been smoking for 19 years so it's always like eh, eh, man, come here we have to praise god today it's it's over my friend here come here look at my son my son he's nine years old look how much of a man he is Look, at, he has a barbo in his hand. His clothes do not fit him because he is wearing my suit and I am six foot two and he is only four feet tall. He is a beautiful man. He's going to have a beautiful wife. He is a beautiful man. That's what it is. But I was walking by this and they, they were trying to stop me. Like one of them literally got out of the seat to like physically put himself in front of me. And he was like, hey, come here. Let me talk to you about that babu. And I was like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good, bro. And he was like, we have food inside. I was like, I don't, bro, what do you think? Um, Do you think that I need your food? I, I don't want to eat that, bro. I'm good. Like, I don't know why you thought that was going to be like a, like that was going to let me get into, I'm not, just not doing it. Sorry. No, so, not sorry, actually. I'm not sorry. Don't put yourself in front of people. I don't want to like read your fucking Bible shit. I get it. You're handing out Bibles or you're handing like paper that says God does stuff. Like, I get it. I'm sure there are a ton of religious people that would love to read that. I'm good, bro. I'm just trying to go get my coffee, go home, and play Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel for three hours and suck dick at the game because I don't like Max C. You don't know. You don't understand that if you don't play the game, but it doesn't matter. Is interested in one of my friends is a piece of shit based on how they treat me. Yeah, no, I totally disagree with that, dude. There have been many times where I just didn't want to talk to somebody because I don't want to talk to them. It's not necessarily I don't like you. It's just, hey, I don't want to have to talk to you right now. What the fuck are you doing right now? Like, just leave me alone. It's like, you ever see... Uh, you, you know when you were a kid and your mom would just bring over random people and you would just never go downstairs because you just didn't want to talk to those people? Then your mom would be like, hey, come down here. Come down. Come on. Come on. Come here. Let me come come downstairs and talk to him. Talk to thing. And you're just like, all right. And you go downstairs and you're like, hi. Hi. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I Yeah, it's been two years. Yes, I know. I grew up. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I remember. Is Yes, you used to wipe my mouth. Yeah, isn't that great? That's so amazing. Um, so like, can I go back to my room and just play like Call of Duty? Like, that's what it is. I don't want to talk to you if I don't want to talk to you. It's not that I'm an asshole. It's just sometimes I, people just don't want to talk to each other. I got rid of myself. Man who's interested in one of my friends is a piece of shit based on how they treat me. Yeah, uh, I'm going to call. This is, this is so incredibly fucking cringe too. Like you're not, a, I'm going to stop, but this is cringe. Because I just straight men do this funny thing where you're not gonna actually give a reason you're just gonna come up with some random excuse why this is a thing they don't respect women unless they're attracted to them that's not how that works at all dude you could no no we're not throwing men under the bus here because dudes don't find you attractive that's not how that works okay what's usually happening is that if a man 
okay, is not interested in dating you, he's not going to pursue dating you, okay? I know that's crazy, but it's just going to happen. There are plenty of times where men can be in relationships with women, work-related. It can be your friend's girlfriend. It can be your friend's wife's girlfriend, whatever. It can be a whole bunch of scenarios where men and women can communicate with each other and be cordial. And I know that in this particular scenario, you have an incentive to say that men are just assholes because they don't want to talk to you. That's not the case, okay? Uh, there are plenty of times that I can have full-on conversations with women that I don't want to have sex with or be with at all, and it's no problem at all. I don't look at women as anything other than human beings, and if I want to have sex with them, that's cool. That's awesome, because guess what? That's That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm looking at them as less valuable. It just means at that particular moment, I maybe think this one is slightly more attractive, but... That doesn't necessarily mean that you're looking at them as less valuable. That's like terrible. That's a terrible, you just like, you're looking at it in like two different, you're looking at it in two different things. Like you're trying to separate them so heavily. I can see you as a person that I can communicate with and I can treat you with respect and also want to have sex with you simultaneously, right? And then those things can also be like not the same, but you're trying to like completely go, these things have to occur simultaneously. And if they don't happen, you just shit. That's terrible. It's, it's crazy. And you see it so vividly when you're fat like i genuinely it's insane that the, the basic experience for men different variations of this as well i've had men treat me just like really shitty i've okay. had men literally act like i don't exist Damn. that's always interesting and strange to it's me it's really sad when these people talk about this stuff because i always think like dude how many times has this happened to you before you realize that you need to make a change in your life? Like, I get it. It's the men that are doing it to you, but you're like the least common denominator here. Like, why don't you decide to make some changes, man? It's like, it's like, okay. And then I've also had men like kind of sometimes like joke about you, like hooking up or dating them. And what are you that's about? also weird because then it's like, you're just kind of making fun of me. Okay, listen, I'm not a woman. And I have not experienced women things, right? I've been around a lot of women that have a lot of like really, really crazy experiences that I cannot relate to. Somebody's got to let me know. Is this a normal thing to be like around dudes and they just go like, oh, wow, I bet fucking Jessica, Jessica's vagina feels like a burrito, like a wet sock or something. Like, I bet it's great. I bet it's so luscious. I don't, is that happening, bro? Because like, I've never, I've never been in these scenarios before where guys, were, unless you're talking about, okay, let me take that back. I have been in scenarios where that's happened, but it's only been in like Call of Duty lobbies from like 15 years ago. So, I mean, I haven't seen that happen since probably 12 years ago. So, I don't know. Like, and I've never seen this in real life. I've never even seen this in like internet circles, but anyway. But in a playful, like nice way. So, it's like. <laughs> it's a playful, nice way. Hey, Jessica, does your vagina, does, do, do does it smell good? <laughs> Is that the playful way? How, how do you say that? Like. It just comes across as strange to me. It is strange if a guy's trying to make like sexual innuendos, yeah. Honestly, I feel like the people who are just directly mean to you because you're fat are looking my faves because at least you know their intentions right away. Because it's weird when you- Aren't you literally complaining that you don't get any attention at all? I guess. You know, just are like getting ignored by boys, especially as you're growing up. I think this is a strange um, thing to deal with because I, have been fat pretty much my whole life but in middle school and high school i feel like you've never been you've been fat for your whole life and you've been dealing with these problems for your whole life and yet you see no correlation i never understood like maybe i'm just a little slow why the boys were not speaking to me because you was busted probably i don't know what to tell you bro okay like when you're in high school or middle school i don't think anybody here is watching this in that grade but you know what I'm talking about. It's a very closed in environment. Like there's not many options because this is your only environment. But when you get out into the real world, you realize that the, the people that you were in high school with or middle school with were like tens, nines and tens are not actually nines and tens, but they were in that particular environment because you're competing with people that are in that environment. So like, for instance, um, a lot of people will say that you're only as good as your competition. So you don't need to actually improve if you're around people that are just scrubs. Uh, so there's that. And then also, uh, it, it's gotta be really crazy to understand that like in high school, you were getting no options, which is obvious. Like most people are not like, it's so crazy to me when I hear people go like, oh my God, like, it's so crazy that like nobody wanted to date me in high school. Like all these people were dating people in high school. Like, can you believe that? And it's like, yeah. Uh, is that like the number, isn't that like the normal experience going to high school? Like, were you dating that if you dated somebody, that's weird. Uh, because like I, me being in high school and like everybody I knew with the exception of maybe like 10 people in the entire school never were dating because everybody was just perpetually musty and busted. Okay. 
even the women, like all the girls that I went to high school with, they were all busted too. So like if you dated in middle school or high school, that's weird. You're outside the norm. Nobody was dating in high school, bro. It's so weird to have any compatibility with people that you're just like, you have to be around. So no, I don't think like, it's so weird when people say that shit because it's like, yeah. And they go, but I'm missing out on the high school experience. Is that really the high school? I thought the high school experience was like, uh, forgetting to wear deodorant for like the fifth day in a row and then trying to not fail your class because you don't want to go to school. I thought that was the high school experience. Not like finding a boyfriend or finding a girlfriend that you're going to like lose your virginity to when you're like 14. Like, I don't think anybody's doing that. Like there, okay. There might be people doing that, but it's the exception. Like most people are completely dry in high school. So anyway. It's, it's such a bizarre way when people say this shit. Like, it's obvious. Like, if you would got if you got no bitches or no menses in high school, I know. Everybody did. Everybody got nothing, okay? I didn't lose my virginity until I was 21. And instead, talking to my friends, like, and introduce themselves to my friends, but not me. I actually, like, thought when I was younger that, like, I did something wrong or I was doing something wrong. I was making myself like invisible or okay something. but this has been an ongoing issue like you're still saying this is an issue to this day so if nothing has changed how the fuck are you just like how are you coping with that like how are you able to you just like externalizing all of this like it's all the guys is literally all the guys fault like it's never you like you're literally dealing with this shit since high school or even middle school and you're still like what are you 33 right now and you're still dealing with this shit dude what? bro get your shit together bro nobody's gonna help you nobody's gonna do it for you Get your shit together. Stop externalizing your problem. Stop putting it on other people. You can't just say men are bad because they don't want to talk to me. It's you. Stop being so musty. Lose some weight. Something, but you know, as you get older, you kind of just see and clock it for what it is. Um, so those are the ones that scare me the most. But what is it? Is it just men bad or is it just the fact that you're just unapproachable? Like people just don't want to. Okay. It's just, I I'm sick of people just like saying shit. Because some of these people have giant platforms and they say this shit and people will look at this and go, yes, this is right. It's not right. This is terrible. This is bad information. This person has absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And they're bestowing this information upon people as if it's like, holy words. This is terrible information. Yeah, having dealt with all different types of fat phobia, honestly, I'm here for the upfront. I would like to know your intentions. Right well, now. if the upfront is literally, I don't want to talk to you, like... I don't want to talk to you. So what do you even mean? Like your literal entire argument is that guys don't approach you, but you want the upfront. Is that is that not upfront? Like if I don't talk to you, that should actually tell you exactly what I what I don't want from you, right? It's like the treating people like they're invisible shit is so fucking weird to me. Like I just don't, I can't compute it. That's I love it. Dude. I know she's, okay. It's very difficult sometimes for genders to see it from the other side and i get that right like when i was talking to girls and they would tell me some crazy shit like guys have approached me guys have cat called me guys would grab ass guys would just like literally stalk me and i'd be like what are you fucking talking about bro that's that literally sounds insane there's no way that's happening but then you see it and you're like oh yeah that is kind of fucking crazy i can't believe these guys exist right because as a dude you don't deal with that like there have been a few times where i've dated women and they've like emailed me or called me 80 times because i didn't want to talk to them right like i've had these crazy girlfriend experiences but the difference of a crazy girlfriend experience and a crazy boyfriend experience is like you might die right like this guy is insane this guy is on some difference it's always crazy to me when i see people on the street that like walk around with these crazy mental illnesses and i'm like this guy is insane like and we're just okay with that but anyway um Sometimes I hear women say stuff like this where they go, it's just like, I don't know. Like, how can guys just look at women and just be invisible? Like, how am I invisible to this guy? It's like really crazy. It's like fucked up. And I'm just thinking like, every guy is invisible to like every single woman, dude. And it's like, I get it. Like, you're looking at this in the, in the, in the spectrum of being fat. But it just comes off so incredibly uh, ignorant. Because, uh, dude, this is the average male experience. And I'm not trying to like say like men have it worse or whatever. But... It's just interesting sometimes when I hear people talk about this shit because it's like these guys are literally describing exactly how men are treated. I'm not like it's not it's I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. Obviously, I don't think any woman is entitled to walk up at any man or like any man is owed the attention from any woman. Like do your thing. Like it's fine. Like I don't care. Right. I, I, I've already come to this. Real, I may have had a problem with this when I was like 21 because I had no experience. But like as you get older, you slowly start to realize like. Dude, you're just like a nobody for most people. And I feel like this woman has to really understand that too. Like you're a nobody. So stop expecting men to walk up to you and give you attention for no other reason than you should be given attention. That's gross. Okay. Get your shit together. You're a nobody. Nobody's in, nobody. No, you're not entitled. Okay. Stop. Sorry. Stop being entitled. 
And, uh, you know, lose some fucking weight. I don't know what the fuck I tell you, bro. If it, if it ain't working, lose some fucking weight. Bullshit is so fucking weird to me. Like, I just don't, I can't compute it. She does understand it, but she's just, she's gaslighting us into believing. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know why it's happening. It's so weird. Straight men honestly just scare me. It's not straight men, though. Like, it's so weird to, like, okay, dude, it's so weird. I don't know why she has to keep pointing out straight men. Because, like, that is default what I know you're talking about. It's such a weird claim to be like, straight men are so weird. You're obviously talking about this in the spectrum of dating. You're obviously talking about this in the spectrum of heterosexual men. Because that's what you're talking about. You're talking about dating, right? I know you're talking about heterosexual men. Do I, Do you think that I thought gay men were not... Uh, 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 gay men would have no intention to talk to you in that particular realm. Because they're gay, right? That would be obvious. So when you say, like, heterosexual men are so weird... Gay men would be weird too in that category because they don't have they don't they have no intention to date you because they're gay. I don't know why you keep pointing out gay men. That shit makes no sense. It's like me going like, dude, like straight women are like they never want to talk to me, bro. Like straight women never want to have sex with me and this and that. Like, dude, uh, I don't know why you're pointing out. I don't know why you're pointing out straight women. I, it's not like I think that lesbian women are coming up to you and trying to like. I don't know, dude, ride you or whatever, dude. Like, obviously, it's just, I don't know, it's just such a weird, I don't know why she has to point it out. I don't know, she has to point it out, heterosexual. I, and by the way, uh, sh just shitting on heterosexual men, which are literally the uh, predominant species of men, is also really fucked up, okay? You know what? I'm gonna say something really sexist. Women, that's gross. Gross on its head, okay? Uh, egg sacs, nasty. Vagina looking at it sometimes, and I go, that's creepy. How do you feel now? How do you feel now? Just shitting on women now. I don't care what you say. Just don't. I can't compute it. Fire it's fire. so weird. Straight men honestly just scare me. I mean, I think they scare all of us, so. I think we all sing, you know? But are they scarier than bears? <laughs> anyway, guys. We're going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, uh, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I appreciate tremendously. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety to, uh, today, I would love to know uh, if you did by leaving down below in the comment section, write it down below, giraffe. I love giraffes. They're beautiful, amazing, spectacular, long-legged, long-necked, big-chinned individuals, and they're beautiful creatures. They're very beautiful creatures. I want to just own one, a baby giraffe. I want to ride it. I would love to have a perpetual baby giraffe, one that doesn't grow. I know it's fucked up because, like, I think most of the time when you buy, like, a, uh, an animal that's really, really small, you literally malnourish it so it stays at that size. I don't want to do that. I would just kind of want one that's kind of mentally, or not mentally, sorry, physically deficient to where it doesn't grow, and then I could take care of it. But I feel like that would be too much work for me, given the fact that it's very hard for me to take care of myself in general. So I don't think I could actually take care of a, you know, a very small baby giraffe looking thing. But regardless, um, I know you could because you're responsible and you're amazing and you're fantastic and you're beautiful and you're well lubricated and you take care of yourself on a daily basis. I know you do. I see the water that you're drinking currently right now through your window. I can see it. You look good while you drink it. That is fantastic. Stay lubricated. Stay hydrated. You're an amazing person. Keep being amazing. Keep being responsible. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.